he shows that he can win with more than just power. It's more than just the handwork. He's lined up over the A gap uh, here, and he gives that right guard a simple head bob. What's up, Browns fans? Time to get smarter about football and, more importantly, about your Browns. Episode three of the Browns Breakdown takes a look at the Browns' th first third-round pick, Jordan Elliott, the defensive tackle out of Missouri. And joining me, as always, on the Browns Breakdown, the Athletics Draft Analyst, Dane Brugler. And, Dane, here's another guy with a lot of talent. The Browns were able to get at a good spot there in the third round and fill a need on their roster. This is now a pretty exciting defensive tackle room with Richardson, Ogan Joby. They bring in the big Andrew Billings, and now you add Jordan Elliott. Yeah, we know talent, not a question for Jordan Elliott. Uh, you watch his tape uh, at Missouri, and you get excited about what he offers, what he can bring. Uh, you know, a player who transfers from Texas, had a little bit of growing up to do. He lost a lot of weight, stay conditioned, had the junior year he needed to have, and he was a top 100 draft pick. And I think he's going to be a player that we see pretty early in his career as a rookie uh, making an impact. And right here uh, off the bat uh, with our first play, you can see a guy that wins uh, with natural power. Uh, he's lined up one-on-one -on -one, uh, versus the left guard and upper lower halves in unison. Uh, that's what you love about Jordan Elliott upper half. He's there's a lot he's throwing at the blocker uh, there at no point. Does he look out of control though? He's under control with his swipe move. Uh, he uses just enough lateral shake where he can get the blocker off balance. And you can see him here with that little shimmy. Uh, the blocker's just left grasping for air using his heavy hands. He can rip through that punch. And, you know, the, he has a, there's a little bit of negative here. He's a bad habit of getting the little high in his rush. But with those movements, that natural power, that's just a lethal dose for any blocker to try and handle a one on one in space. Hey, give him the little slip, little whoop. And there he is to the quarterback, and you'll see this guy can close to the quarterback and finish those plays. That was a great one. And it's not just those. Those are kind of advanced moves, though, aren't they, for, for a young man coming out of college right there? That's it. it, it he's throwing a lot at him, but it's all, it's all under control. It's not like he's just flailing his arms around and seeing what works. He is staying coordinated with his upper and lower halves on the same page. You see the rip. You see a little – a uh, bit of a push pull and his ability to get outside that uh, that outside shoulder. And so I, I think that that really shows that there's a plan here. Uh, it's not just him throwing whatever he can and seeing what works. There is a plan a method to the madness. And in a play like this, he leaves that blocker just grasping for air and, and just trying to keep up with a player like this. It is amazing when you can see a 300 pound man be about six inches from another 300 pound man and somehow not allow them to get their hands on them. That is pretty agile. That little hop step right there. That looks like maybe he played hoops back in the day. Uh, pretty impressive yeah. from Jordan Elliott. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that brings us to, the, to our next clip because I think this next one shows uh, a lot of that body control. And you talk about playing uh, different sports and how that helps. This snap against Florida uh, he shows that he can win with more than just power. It's more than just the handwork. He's lined up over the A-gap uh, here, and he gives that right guard a simple head bob. You see a little head bob, boom, and he attacks that slanted outside shoulder. That's step one. This, this is a, a play that has like three steps to it. That first step is that head bob, win the gap. Okay, so really nice job attacking the gap. Two more steps uh, can, so that really makes this play effective. Next is a play recognition, because as soon as he infiltrates that gap, he's reading the mesh and he has to make a split second decision. Is he going to take the back or is he going to stick with the quarterback? Elliot reads it right away. He sticks with the back. And this is where that third uh, step comes in. And it's the thing that I think really uh, separates him. Not only does he make the right read, but he shows outstanding body control where he can stick his foot in the ground, make that 90 degree hard turn and pounce on the back before he can even reach the line of scrimmage. So not only does Elliott have the quickness where he can win the gap, you see it here, boom, foot in the ground, hard 90-degree angle, he makes contact with the running back before he can even reach the line of scrimmage. So not only does he have the athleticism for a play like this, but you see the play recognition, you see the body control, several positive traits show out on a play like this. All right, Dana, I've got to ask you, two plays in, you're seeing somebody that looks like they can be dominant at the next level. So he went in the third round, obviously, for a reason. But would you say his upper echelon tape is first round 
quality. It's just he's got to be more consistent. 100%. And, you know, I think we could probably could have said the same about Grant Delpit. Uh, you watch the highlights. You show what he can do really well and what he did uh, on occasion uh, more times than not. You see a first-round player. Jordan Elliott, at, at, with his base just on talent, should have been a first-round player. But consistency was an issue for him. Uh, a guy that, you know, had a little bit of growing up to do. Weight and being staying conditioned was an issue for him as an underclassman. But he put together a, a, a much better junior year than I think a lot of people thought, uh, maybe because, again, he was a, such a young player. And showing plays like this, this is what he is capable of. Th this talent, he wakes up and gets out of bed with this kind of talent. Now the coaches, they need to rein it in and get him to do this from a snap-in, snap-out basis. Yeah, it's impressive. So that guy looks a little bit like Aaron Donald right there, to be honest. And I'm going to put that kind of a comparison on him at all. Aaron Donald, the best defensive player in the National Football League. But you don't see big guys move like that very often. And that really just jumps out at you. Yeah, no question. And really, that brings us to this last play I wanted to highlight. Because, you know, just like how we mentioned how he had some growing up to do. And you did worry a little bit about, um, you know, him staying focused. And this is a play where I really wanted to highlight his effort. Because while there are some of those questions – on a play like this, there's no question about the hustle. Initially, you see him, he's that, that double team early on off the snap. Uh, you know, see the double team, he's got nowhere to go, but he sees the screen start to develop. And so once he sees that, he stops and he immediately goes reverse, hits the gas and finds the receiver, tracks him down from behind. And this could have been a pretty big play for, for Florida. Instead, we see the defensive tackle track him down chase him down and it's a minimal gain. And so I think one of the reasons this is important is this is a player that brings a little bit of baggage to him, why he was a third round pick and not a first round pick. And so while he had a few of those immature moments in college, he has kept his body conditioned, the hustle, the effort plays like this. I think that's why the Browns really optimistic about taking a chance on a player with this kind of talent in the third round. Yeah, he's going to get an opportunity to learn from a guy like Sheldon Richardson, who's a veteran, a guy, former first rounder, former defensive rookie of the year. And, and hopefully he can kind of get under that tree and learn from Sheldon because this tape shows a guy that is willing. You showed him rush the quarterback sack. You showed him break up and penetrate and break up a run play. But then this, he's lined up basically in the A gap and ends up making yeah. a tackle on a wide receiver screen outside the hashes down the field. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive, as you said, effort but also agility and speed. I mean, you've got to be able to turn around, moving 300 pounds one direction and then turning it around, going back the other. Not easy, but he actually makes it look fairly routine from his athletic profile standpoint there. Yeah, he does. And the thing is, is with a lot of defensive tackles, uh, defensive tackles, they'll take plays off here and there. And a lot of defensive tackles, when they meet that double team, that's when they'll kind of shut it down and say, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to take up space here, occupy two guys. But then once the screen starts to develop, that's where he hits the gas. And that's where the effort really shows. That's where that speed and agility really shows. And he, again, this could have been a much bigger play. Instead, he's able to chase it down for a minimal gain. So just a big time play by a, a talent who, if he brings this consistently, uh, he is going to be a hard guy to bring off the field. Yeah, do you look for him maybe in his rookie year? Because it's actually it's a pretty good, as we talked about at the top, a good defensive tackle room. You've got Richardson, you've got Larry Ogan, Joby, Andrew Billings, who's more of the bigger, the run stopper, and then now you've got Elliott. Do you see him as maybe a situational pass rusher as a rookie with the potential, if he plays like this down in and down out, to maybe be more and maybe you push Larry Ogan, Joby alongside Sheldon Richardson? Yeah, and he'll be probably putting uh, – you just mentioned uh, you know that, what that defensive tackle depth chart looks like he won't be relied on to be the guy from day one where he's going to have to play uh, you know, a high percentage of snaps. They can bring him in on sub packages. They can spell him and just have that heavy rotation at defensive line. Keep these guys fresh because that's when we saw Jordan Elliott at his best, when he was able to stay fresh and exert all his energy because when he does, we see plays like this where the effort, the hustle, and the talent really shine through. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to hear from Jordan Elliott uh, during his rookie year, making an impact, even if it's coming off the bench, even if he doesn't have any starts to his name, he will still make an impact as a rookie. And that's what all you can ask for from a third round pick to have this type of potential. And we'll see if Jordan Elliott and the coaching staff can come together to get it out of him. That will be exciting to see when the Browns are able to take the field. This has been episode three of the Browns Breakdown. For Dane Brugler, I'm Nathan Zagura. Stay tuned for more Inside the Film Room. <laughs>